morning, y'all. Welcome to Austin's amazing Central Library. I had a chance um, as everybody was coming in to introduce myself and get a feeling of uh, where people were coming from. So met people from Seattle, Dallas, Washington DC, Boulder. Um, how many for how many people um, is this your first time here at the Central Library? Wonderful. Um, I know you have a jam-packed day, but I hope that you take the opportunity to explore our six floors um, throughout the day. We do close at 9. Tomorrow we're open at 10 a.m. Uh, Rooftop Garden is my favorite spot. It's on the sixth floor, overlooks the hill country and uh, Lady Bird Lake. Um, Time Magazine actually last year named us as one of the 100 best places to visit in the world. Um, it was a huge, huge honor. Um, and we are really thrilled to be able to host STEM Summit 7. And I think we can all agree Austin is one of the best places to talk about STEM and work. Um, we, have a, we have a couple of businesses here you may have heard of. Um, Dell, Apple, IBM, Google is right there. They're actually going to be occupying that, that big hole in the ground next door. They're actually going to be taking that over soon. Facebook is our neighbor as well. Silicon Labs, Indeed, plus the hundreds and hundreds of startups here. In 2018, the Austin tech industry added 5,200 jobs. And since 2010, Austin has added 44,500 tech-related jobs in areas such as enterprise software, semiconductors, corporate R&D, biotechnology, and gaming. And that's exciting. Um, but with that good also comes growing pains as well. Um, Austin's not cheap. Uh, so I know some people in the audience are from Austin. And with the rapidly rising costs of living threatening affordability, many Austinites are being pushed out of the communities in which they grew up, um, where they have family homes, and most are minorities and creatives. In fact, as we see the population of Austin getting larger and larger and larger, the African-American community is decreasing as they're being displaced out of the city. So in response to that crisis, the Austin Area Workforce Development community-based organizations, um, training providers, and employers have created a master community workforce plan to help individuals find a path to financial stability so that we can keep people here in Austin. Um, the workforce plan will help 10,000 economically disadvantaged individuals secure middle skill jobs by 2021. Um, and it's no surprise that information technology, um, that sector represents some of the best career opportunities. And this is where the library fits in. Um, we are known as the great equalizer. So through programming, our collection, digital access, um, we're building awareness. We are cultivating an interest in high demand jobs and through strategic partnerships that we have throughout the community, we'll be providing the, safe, the space for training and upskilling so workers are equipped with the skills they need. And this is, this is new territory for us. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of the, the great STEM related activities um, that we've been doing. So we had a, we had a really cool dino pop-up museum um, here in this space, and we had Dinosaur George come, who has the largest um, traveling dinosaur museum in North America, and it was pretty awesome. So imagine the space being filled with over 150 individual dinosaur pieces. Um, dinosaur jo George taught kids about how scientists are using the latest imaging technologies to study dinosaur brains. Uh, 4,700 people came that day to this pop-up event. Uh, we had a tween hackathon. Um, it, wa it wasn't truly a hackathon. Um, I think they just slapped that name on because it sounds cool. But um, they did. T we, had, we had many teens who came and they participated in activities such as 3D printing and coding, robotics and virtual reality. Um, we also had a, a Ready Player One pixel party. We had uh, Sphero Maze, 3D scanning. Their, their teens' heads were scanned um, with a 3D scanner, and then they could see how they could manipulate that image to, for 3D printing. Um, we had volunteers from Google come, um, and they, every participant was given a free pair of the Google Cardboard VR um, headsets, which was really cool. And they played with Google's app 
Expeditions app is the name of, of it. So yeah, virtual reality. The, the teen space is really cool on the third floor to check out. Um, Pi Day, um, Pi and Pi, the edible kind. Uh, we had a mathematician come and talk to kids about um, the wonders of Pi. And then we, we have a demo kitchen here at the library and we actually had a uh, chef and baker come and actually uh, bake a pie for us, which was really cool. Uh, Super Science Saturday, um, one of the branches on the east side held a full day of science-based activities where the youth learned uh, different types of engineering, created a carnival-themed ride with little bits gizmos, attended an astronomy show in a mobile planetarium, which I don't know if you all have seen those before, but they're really cool, um, and, a, and a lot more. And, and keep in mind that when we, when we produce these programs for kids, we understand that for a lot of them, this is the first time that they're ever going to be having access to this type of technology. That it's expensive, um, and, and kids and their families, um, a lot of them can't afford it. So we take great pride in that. And our um, Youth Code Jam, again, held here. We partnered with Youth Code Jam, with it, which is a Texas nonprofit, and we capped the event at 400 people, and we had hundreds on the waiting list. And the cool part about it is we had a okay, majority were female, 60% were children of color. And where you, we live in a city of where 75% of the residents are white, we were intentional in trying to market as much as we could using our community partners to try to get as many kids of color the opportunity to participate in this event. And I have the coolest video. So um, we'll hit that, and that's where I'll end. And for you to enjoy that, you'll recognize the space. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Have a great conference. What we're teaching them in school is true. It can happen. You can be an engineer. You can work at Google. That these people who are here helping you do this every day, and so can you. I want to become an engineer when I grow up. And at school, we promote a lot of like coding programs and events where we can do coding. And so I thought today would be an opportunity. I might become a civil engineer, and I might also maybe an activist as well, just to kind of put forth my message on. How should all have equal opportunities? Well, as a uh, blind software developer and um, also as a female, we want to get as many people involved in technology as possible with the understanding that they can have a great impact because I could not be doing the work that I do as a software developer if it wasn't for somebody who would have built the software that allows me to use a computer so that you, uh, going into this field, could have very big impact. This is a gateway to success. Absolute gateway to success. In the city of Austin alone, there are more jobs than we have to keep. Guys, those jobs are for you. They're absolutely for you. We need you to be able to think kids. We need you to be able to think computationally. We need you to be able to know how to code because you will create our future. 